Welcome to the Boston Herald. I'm Megan Adelini here with political reporter Chris Cassidy. And what else are we talking about but the latest in the Trump presidency? So we just had this report from the Washington Post last night, a special report about uh, investigating the president for a possible obstruction of justice. So, Chris, can you start us off by just telling us exactly what we know about this investigation right now? Sure. So last night, the Washington Post came out with a story. It was backed up by a few other uh, news organizations saying that uh, Robert Mueller, who's doing the special investigation into Russian meddling, is now apparently focusing on Trump, and particularly this meeting that he uh, appeared to have with the director of national intelligence, Dan Coats, and the NSA director, Mike Rogers, uh, where Trump allegedly tried to get both of them to convince Comey, the f fired uh, FBI director, to back off of the Mike Flynn investigation. So Mueller is going to have some conversations with both of them uh, to ask them whether that's the case, what exactly did happen in those conversations, and uh, whether where the investigation kind of goes from there. And so it's interesting because uh, just last week, uh, President Trump was saying he felt vindicated that he's no longer a target in the investigation. That may not be true as of this moment with the, the, some of these new developments. Uh, and it does raise the question of whether at some point in this investigation by Robert Mueller, the President Trump himself would have to have a conversation with him. Right. And I did want to note that we will be monitoring uh, some of the comments on this video. So if you have a particular question that you'd like uh, Chris or I to answer, please comment and we'll take a look. Um, so what is the Trump team's response to to this report that we just got? Yeah, so the, the Trump legal team had uh, pushed back, uh, basically um, criticizing some of the leaks that came out of the FBI. Basically, the, the reason why some of these reports came out was because of some leaks. So the, on one level, the legal team is criticizing uh, the fact that this information is just kind of leaking out. Uh, but Trump himself tweeted out this morning, uh, basically saying that uh, they made up a phony collusion with the Russian story, found zero proof, so now they go for obstruction of justice on the phony story. Nice. You are witnessing the single greatest witch hunt in American political history, led by some very bad and conflicted people. Hashtag make America great again. So uh, basically saying if, you know, the last time, you know, everyone made a big deal about this and it turned out I wasn't involved and this is just the next chapter in that. And he's basically saying that everything is going to turn out okay. Some very bad and conflicted people. Is that a shot at the special counsel there? It, it looks like it's a shot at basically everyone that's investigating him, but certainly Robert Mueller, who you may recall, supposedly uh, Trump was considering firing a couple of days ago. We don't know for sure if that's true, but there were some, some reports to that effect. Uh, the, CNN had a report earlier this week saying that um, some of Mueller's team, the parts of his team, uh, had donated to mostly Democratic campaigns over the years, so raising the question of whether they could be uh, completely objective if they had largely supported Democrats in the past. But uh, the, the Trump team uh, is saying that there's, there's nothing going on here. And as you recall last week, Trump said, I will take I will sit down and say some of these things under oath. I don't have any uh, issue with that, so he may do have think, to do it. Do you think he will, that we'll actually see that, to see the president go under oath? Because any time a president goes under oath, wow, that's a really big deal. Right, and it, I think it depends a lot on what Coates and Rogers say in their um, conversations with Mueller, because that'll be interesting. They, he t they testified last week, and they uh, didn't answer really any questions about their conversations with the president you know, will that be different this time around with Mueller? Will they actually provide information? And if there is information, does it then lead you back to the president? So I think a lot of it is going to depend on how Coates and Rogers handle their conversations with Mueller this week. Um, and then, again, you know, the president could always invoke uh, executive privilege. We don't know yet if he's going to do that uh, for Rogers and Coates or for himself. Um, but that would certainly be a, a landmark uh, event in this entire investigation, a sitting president uh, having a conversation under oath with a special prosecutor. Why has he not uh, invoked executive privilege? Is that just an optics thing, do you think? Or, you know, your own opinion in following these news stories? I, I think part of it is that uh, you want to appear as though you're being as transparent as possible, that you have nothing to hide. Uh, when he did come out last week and say, I will testify under oath, he seemed to say, uh, I, I have nothing to hide and, and I'm going to be as forthcoming as possible. Uh, and then we had Jeff Sessions testify in public session uh, earlier this week as well. I mean, if you can remember that, because it just seems right. like there have been so many events that It feels happening. like it was two weeks ago. It, exactly. And the Comey testimony feels like it was a month ago. So politically, when you invoke executive privilege, first of all, it could also go to the court. Somebody could challenge it if he did. So that could drag out the process, and he may end up losing anyway. Um, so there may be this idea of let's just get as much information out there as, as possible. And just one thing that's really interesting about, you know, we started this in, entire investigation uh, with, you know, Russian meddling in the election. 
and it is, has morphed into what we think now is, you know, uh, the president may be trying to cover up aspects of, you know, trying to get Mike Flynn, uh, the investigation lifted, so potentially obstruction of justice. This reminds you of when you have a special counsel. You think back to the president, for President Clinton, and how that uh, Ken Starr, that prosecutor, started with Whitewater and ended up with the Monica Lewinsky scandal. So these things, once they get started, kind of take on a life of their own. Right, and you don't no, know where they're going to go yeah, next. No telling what the next turn may be. I want to switch gears a little bit. And again, if you do have a particular question, please shout it out in the comments section and we'll try to address it. But I wanted to talk about uh, following the terrible shooting that happened yesterday at a GOP baseball practice early in the morning. Uh, now the president confronting this political divisiveness in the country. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, he, you know, obviously the election has been pretty divisive for a lot of people. And so the president did have a, a pretty uh, eloquent statement yesterday saying that, you know, essentially we are the strongest when we are together and that the country should be able to come together in, in moments like this and, and be able to work uh, together. And you saw, you know, Democrats, there was the Democratic baseball team that uh, there was a photo capture of them praying uh, when they were taking practice, uh, when they heard what had happened with their Republican colleagues. Uh, and so yesterday you were seeing a lot of Democrats and Republicans playing nice, talking nice, um, hoping that they could restore some of this uh, civility that had been lost. Um, but I think a lot of skeptics out there are saying we've, we've certainly had uh, shootings before, terrorist attacks before, where everyone has thought that this would be the moment that everyone would come together, and after a week or two, something else happens. There's a controversy or a scandal, and it goes back to to this, you know, this this anti uh, sort of friendly discourse and, and sort of the rancor and uh, that sort of thing. So um, the question is, I guess, because of the fact that this involved one of their own, um, mm -hmm. whether this becomes a little bit more personal, whether this really does uh, lead to any kind of change uh, long term in, in the way that that business is, is conducted on, on Capitol Hill. A lot has been made over uh, this particular shooter's uh, supposed political activity, you know, being a so-called Bernie bro. Uh, is that unprecedented? Is that particularly shocking? And does that indicate anything in our political landscape right now? Yeah, you know, Bernie Sanders was pretty quick to come out and to say he was sickened and disgusted by, by what had happened. Uh, he did have to uh, tell some of his supporters uh, last year to sort of knock off some of the, the violence that they had seen that perhaps were some of the Bernie supporters at some Trump rallies. Uh, but there's certainly been some very passionate supporters on the Trump side and on the Clinton side and that, you know, things, it, this is certainly a level that is, is you know, gone beyond what a lot of people thought was, was possible. Uh, but, you know, at what point do the candidates have to take responsibility for some of the things? And obviously, to be clear, Bernie Sanders has never said anything along those lines. Right. Um, but uh, at what point does the, the sort of vitriol rise to a level where, where unstable people, unfortunately, are sort of, uh, you know, they feel like they have to take this step? Great. Well, Chris, no telling where this investigation is going to lead us next, but we'll follow it with you. Thank you so much for joining me today. You bet.